If you live in a cold weather area like I do here in northern New Jersey, you know that the winter months are challenging when it comes to driving. If you own an electric vehicle, they can be even more challenging. But don't worry, there are tips and best practices that you can follow to survive the winter without a problem. I'm Tom Malogany for Inside EVs, and I've been driving electric vehicles through the past 12 winters. So I've got plenty of experience doing this. We're gonna talk about some of the things you can do to survive the winter months in cold weather areas. But first, make sure subscribe to this channel, tap the notification bell, so you don't miss any upcoming content here on the Inside EVs YouTube channel. So it's about 19 degrees here in New Jersey and we had another snowstorm yesterday. I thought it'd be a good idea to be driving in an electric vehicle while we go over our winter driving tips. This is my 2021 Tesla Model 3. So we decided we're gonna go over this in two different sections. The first section is going to be how to get your EV ready for the winter. Now, not all of these tips are really 100% EV specific, but it's good to go over some of the things that you should do in any vehicle so that you're ready for winter. Now, the second section, which is how to minimize the effects the cold weather has on your range is EV specific. In each section, we're going to have five tips plus one bonus tip that's specifically for Tesla owners. And well, after all, Tesla does sell the most electric vehicles, at least here in the US by far. So we're giving Tesla owners a little bonus in each section. Tip number one for getting your EV prepared for winter months is making sure you have the proper tires. Now, obviously this is good for any car. If you live in an area where you get frequent snowstorms where it's really cold and there's icy roads, you really should have proper winter tires on. All season tires just don't cut it in areas that have a lot of snow and ice on the roads. The first thing I did when I got my Model 3 was get a nice set of winter tires to put on. I got the car in December. so. It was immediately uh, time to put on the winter tires. You want to put your winter tires on when the uh, ambient temperature averages below 40 degrees. Uh, that's when the winter tires really take effect because not only do they have the right tread pattern for snow and ice, but they're actually made of a different compound. The compound is specifically formulated for cold weather and it remains flexible when it's really bitter cold out, whereas summer tires or even all season tires get very stiff and they lose grip. So if you have an EV and you live in an area that gets a lot of snow, if there's icy roads, make sure to put winter tires on them. It'll make a huge difference. Tests have shown that Winter tires on a two-wheel drive car actually perform better than vehicles that have all-wheel drive and don't have the proper tires. It makes that much of a difference. While we're on the topic of tires, let's talk about tire pressure. In the winter, when the temperatures drop, so does your tire pressure. Uh, so you want to make sure as soon as it starts getting cold out, once you see temperatures in the 30s on a consistent basis, uh, check your tire pressure and add air to bring it back up to the manufacturer's recommended pressure. Now, underinflated tires, number one, are unsafe because they don't perform as well. They wear faster, so you're gonna wear your tires out. And number three, they'll rob your EV of range because they create more friction, you're not gonna go as far. And that's something in the winter that becomes a problem. So the easiest thing you can do is early in the early in the season, make sure you put some air in your tires, get them back up to the manufacturer's recommended pressure, and that's one problem you have out of the way. Our third tip is to make sure you disable auto folding mirrors if your vehicle comes equipped with them. Now they can freeze up and the motors can actually break if it's trying to open or close when it's frozen. So 
many electric vehicles today come with automatic folding mirrors. It's usually in the setting somewhere. You can disable that feature, especially when you know that you're getting into the season where you're getting uh, rain or snow, then it freezes, then it thaws, then it refreezes. Water can work into the mirrors, freeze up, and then when the, when the mirror tries to open up or close in, it can break. You don't want that to happen. Another suggestion we'd like to make is on the first time you're driving your EV in the snow and ice, test the regenerative brakes. Now, as you know, many EVs have very strong liftoff regenerative braking systems, and they slow the vehicle down dramatically when you lift off the accelerator. That can be a problem, especially if you don't have great winter tires on the car, and it could initiate wheel slippage and a skid. So some people like to adjust the setting of their regenerative braking to a low setting so the regen is less aggressive when it's icy roads. Now, that varies greatly from vehicle to vehicle, which is why I initially recommended that the first time you're driving your EV in the snow and icy road conditions, test it out a little bit. Drive for a little bit, lift off the accelerator, see how the regen grabs, see if it seems like it's too aggressive, and if it is, put it on the low setting so you have less aggressive regen. Now, that might be counterproductive for extending your range in the winter, but avoiding an accident is a little bit more important than squeezing out another two or three miles of range from the regen that you have, re the energy you've recuperated through regenerative braking. And our fifth tip uh, really, again, isn't completely EV specific. Uh, but if you know that your vehicle is going to be parked outside before it snows, it's always a good idea to lift your wiper blades. Now, on Tesla vehicles, that's not that easy because Tesla, to improve aerodynamics, has their wiper blades tucked up underneath the lip of your hood. You can't lift them up like you can on pretty much every other vehicle. So what you have to do is go into the settings of your car, um, tick, uh, click service, and then you uh, slide the tab for wiper service mode. And the wipers lift up out from underneath the hood just enough so that you can lift them out and keep them away from the windshield. That and that'll make it easier to lift the wiper blade so you can scrape the ice off the windshield. And for our bonus tip on getting your EV ready for the winter months, I'd like to talk a little bit about Tesla Model 3 rear window and how water and snow can slide into it if you open up the trunk. If you have a Tesla Model 3, make sure you clean all the snow off of your rear window before you open the trunk. Uh, otherwise, bad things happen. Now, it's been well documented that in the when it's raining out and you open up the trunk, water slides in. But the same thing happens with snow. And then for the 2021 model year, Tesla did redesign the rubber gasket that goes around the, the, the trunk lid. And it does make a difference. The, it does now keep out most of the rain, uh, but it doesn't do anything to help the snow. Uh, seriously, Elon? So now we're gonna talk a little bit about how to minimize the effects the cold weather has on your driving range. There's no magic bullet. Your electric vehicle isn't gonna go quite as far in cold weather as it does when it's nice and warm out. Uh, batteries are like people. They kinda like to be somewhere between 40 degrees Fahrenheit and 80 or 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Once you start getting above that or below that, that's when they don't really perform as well as they can. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is probably the most important. And this is important all year round, but it really, really becomes more important in the winter when you're trying to squeeze out every mile you can. And that's how you drive the vehicle, uh, how fast you drive, uh, how 
quickly or rapidly you take off from a standstill. Try not to make jackrabbit starts. I, I know it's hard because EVs are fun to drive. They have that instant torque. It's so great to just step on the accelerator and take off instantly, but that uses a lot of energy. So during the winter months, especially if you're on a trip where you're trying to squeeze out every mile you can, try to accelerate nice and slowly and also decelerate um, in advance. When you see that there, you're going to have to slow down, there's a red light in the distance or traffic is in the distance, ease off the accelerator you know, far in advance, gradually slow down to, to a stop. And on the highway, if you can manage to just drive five or 10 miles an hour slower than what you normally do, you'd be amazed the difference that that can make. Uh, highway speeds kill electric vehicles, or most of them at least. There are some that actually perform pretty well at, at highway speeds, like the Porsche Taycan. Uh, but for most other EVs, if you can just limit your, your speed to somewhere around 65, I know that's hard on some roads, you'll, you'll be shocked at how much further it'll go. That's the first tip, slow down. Tip number two for extending your range in the winter is try to use your heated seats and heated steering wheel if the vehicle has it more so than you do the cabin heating. I'm not saying completely turn off the cabin heating, but don't have it cranked up as high as you normally do. You'll notice a difference. And you'll also notice that the seat warmers will do a really good job in keeping your body nice and warm and you won't waste so much energy just heating up all the air in the cabin of the car. Tip number three, select eco mode or in Tesla vehicles, chill mode. Uh, that will send less power to the motor and there'll be more energy left over to extend your range. The added bonus of that is with less power going to the traction motor, you're less likely to give it a little too much energy and have your wheels spin and perhaps enter a skid on icy roads. So there's two benefits there, safer, more range. Our fourth tip and one of the biggest tips is use the preconditioning feature that your electric vehicle has, if it has it. Most electric vehicles today allow the owner to select a schedule to precondition the battery. Basically, what it does is it'll turn your heating system on to heat the battery and the cabin uh, a, a period of time before you leave every day. Let's say you leave for work every morning at eight o'clock, you set the preconditioning to turn on at seven o'clock or 7.15. And during that period of time, your battery and your cabin is getting nice and warmed up while it's taking energy from the grid because the vehicle is plugged in. I had, I forgot to mention that. Make sure your vehicle is plugged in when you're using preconditioning feature, but chances are that's going to happen anyway, because when you come in at home at night, you plug in the vehicles recharging, it fully charges overnight, it shuts off, but it's still plugged in. And then an hour or so before you leave in the morning, preconditioning turns on and the car is getting nice and toasty and it's pulling that energy from the grid, not from your battery. You get in the car, it's nice and warm, and then you can maybe turn on the seat heaters and you don't even need the cabin heating, uh, or you can have it set very low, and you're nice and warm, and you've saved a lot of energy. I should also point out that not every EV allows scheduled preconditioning, although most do. The Bolt EV, for one, uh, doesn't allow it for some reason. That's a, a big miss for GM. Uh, so what you can do to try to offset the fact that it doesn't have preconditioning scheduling is you can schedule the time your car charges so that it finishes charging right around the time you leave in the morning. Now, the, 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 the act of charging the vehicle in itself will warm up the battery. So if you know that you're leaving at 8 o'clock in the morning and your car is going to take two or three hours to recharge, depending on how much you drove the night before, you set the scheduled charging for the vehicle to start three or four hours before you leave in the morning. And it'll just be finishing up right before you leave and the battery's gonna be warmer. It's not as good as preconditioning, but it does help. And the Bolt does allow the owner to start preconditioning manually through the app or the key fob. So what you could do is delay the, the, the charging of the vehicle. And then when you get up in the morning, a little bit before you're going to leave, press the, the preconditioning button, and then you're going to have a nice warm 
battery and cabin. The only problem is you have to remember to do that every day. That's why that's not as good as the vehicles that allow you to set a schedule for preconditioning because you don't have to remember anything. You come out, the vehicle's 100% charged, and it's nice and toasty warm. And our fifth tip on how to increase your winter range is pretty simple. Try to park in direct sunlight when you can. If you're going to a shopping mall or if you're where you work at your job has areas that seem to get more sunlight than others, seek those areas out and park there, even if it means you have to walk a little further. Uh, you'll thank me for the uh, exercise. Um, but it does make a difference. I have a friend of mine that uh, where, where he worked, they had a parking uh, deck and the top level, nobody ever parked on because the, 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 the lot was never, wasn't close to filled and that was the longest walk to go to the top. Uh, but he started keeping a log on when he parked in the deck, which had no sunlight, obviously it was indoors. And then when he parked uh, on the top level where he had direct sunlight all day, and he was a bit of a data geek and he kept track of this for the entire winter. The temperature was outside, when he plugged in, his state of charge, when he left work, when he arrived home. And he, he proved that just by parking outside in the sunlight, he arrived home on average with five miles more range than on the days that he parked inside. So while it might be minimal, um, this is ways to squeeze out every mile that you can. If you have the opportunity to park in direct sunlight as opposed to in the shade or indoors, use that because just the, the sun beating down on your EV all day, the cabin's gonna be warmer and the battery will even be warmer. So it makes a difference. And our bonus tip for Tesla owners is if you're going to a supercharger, make sure you set the supercharger as a destination in your in-car navigation system in the winter. Even if you know how to get there and you don't need directions, that's because the car will begin preconditioning the battery for the supercharger. And what it does is it warms the battery up so that it's at the proper temperature to take a high charge rate. If you pull into a supercharger with a stone cold battery, the car will charge very slowly. And you might be there an extra half an hour or 45 minutes. It makes that much of a difference. So what you want to do is enter the supercharger as a destination. So the vehicle knows, hey, I'm going to a supercharger and it'll start warming up the battery. You'll spend less time at the supercharger than if you didn't. So that does it for the Inside EV's electric vehicle winter driving tips. If you have a tip that we didn't mention here today, be sure to leave it in the comments section below so your fellow EV drivers can benefit from the knowledge you've learned driving your electric vehicle in the winter months. Before we go, don't forget, please click that subscribe button and tap the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content here on the Inside EV's YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.